Rose Diggs. Rose Diggs. Hey, D Rose, listen, even though you guys came up short, the fact that you were right in the middle of what is going to be remembered as a touchstone moment it was awesome. in the game of baseball, I think you guys should obviously be very proud of that. So congratulations. I know it's opening day. I had no idea four months ago or last August when I got myself into that, what I actually was taking <laughs> on. I wanna, I wanna give everybody a little bit behind the scenes how yeah. much I loved it how it was the most amazing and stressful experience of my life. And then I want to I want to table it and I want to focus on opening day. But there are so many people this tournament. Get in on it because everybody who shows up and buys into this thing, they are playing with their hearts on their sleeves, trying to represent their country. So real quick, I'm going to take you behind the scenes. Let's start day one. You want to talk about being nervous? I have never managed a thing in my life. So to address a room full of the game's greatest superstars was one of the more humbling and nerve wracking experiences of my life. But it was something I felt comfortable doing that I've done before. And I wanted the message to get out there for you old school baseball lovers at home. I made these guys do a full infield outfield first day throws from the outfield. Nolan Arenado going backhand short one and in. I mean, all these things that they haven't done since high school to try and get them to kind of bond and become a team. That was my goal from jump. How do I get the greatest players to buy in to stop trying to impress each other? Ooh, that's big. And right. I know you thought about that first moment, that first word. What 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 was it? What was your first sentence? What was your first message to them? I think I said to them how honored and humbled I was to be be in front of them. But but the fact that that needs to, for whatever reason you're here, why you're wearing USA, whether it's family motivated, whether it's it's something personal, whatever motivates you, you better jump on board because it's seven games in 11 days. And for a lot of you guys that have never been to the postseason, it's going to smack you in the face. Mm. And, it, and it did. OK, so these are just surreal moments from day one. The second thing I learned in this process, change the channel. You ain't doing this without an, un clicker. without an unbelievable coaching staff. And I gained friends for life. Andy Pettit, people, this is ride or die for me, this guy. 19 years with the Yanks, right? Eight World Series, five World Series champions. You talk about being able to look at him, Dave Rigetti, my best buddy, Brian McCann, Michael Young, Jerry Manuel, Ken Griffey, Dino Ebel, Lou Collier, these guys were killers for me. They really were. But Andy Pettit didn't know him coming into this. Yeah. We had to fight to put this together, OK? With the parameters we were dealing with with these teams, pitching-wise, it almost made it impossible for us to get through this. Most of your relievers could not pitch back-to-back -back games. Nobody games. could go back-to-back -back okay. games. And oh. only a certain number of your relievers could come in in a quote-unquote dirty inning. And Two. John Smoltz did a great job Two of explaining of that to the viewer for people at home who didn't know. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. Well, judging from social media, there were a lot of people I that know. did not get that but message. But he did. So laying at home in the offseason, guys were calling me kind of politicking to get on the team. One of the calls that I got was the best call was from a guy around a campfire, probably had a few, and he was hunting with his buddies. And that was this beast, okay? Lance Lynn. I got to give this guy some love. I like him. Because when our bullpen was in dire straits in pool play, Lance Lynn had to go five innings and throw 65 pitches for us. And he stepped off the mound after the top of the first and said, step on there. We're killing them tonight. He woke everybody up in that dugout. And we went on and were able to run rule Canada and kind of reset our bullpen. Otherwise, we would have been in some serious this hot water. This was after the Mexico loss. This was after the Mexico loss. Yeah. OK? So some other moments just getting the getting on the plane to Miami with all the guys. What I was most proud of, obviously representing your country, there was a couple moments where I had to like take a step back. Uh, this one. This is great. I was like, I, what is going on? Tears, I, I had tears. <laughs>
You had tears. Oh, I'm walking out behind the best player of our generation. He's carrying the American flag like Rocky Balboa. And I was just blown away at the atmosphere. I played in a lot of postseason games, been a part of World Series teams. The environment was the same. For some of these games, the environment was the same. The brand, the ball was the same. I think also the way international fans yes, watch a game Robert, yes. and consume different. baseball, it's much different than the way we do it here. And quite frankly, I think we could take a couple of lessons from them. Okay, so if I can just dig on myself for one second. Let's do it. Sure. Of all the things that I'm most proud of, I, I always wanted to believe that you can get guys to be the best versions of themselves, right? I don't care who you are, the most arrogant guy in the That's world. That's what you do best, talented. read a room. How, how do we get everyone to yeah. put, put their devices down, be self-deprecating, be engaging, be honest, and have fun? So before the Venezuela game, I had played over there in 99. I knew the passion of that country. Mm -hmm. I knew how their fans were gonna be. And I called a meeting and basically said I wanted to match their passion. That's good and if there was it. a moment for us to do that, that I wanted the entire team to go to home plate. And then this happened. Trey Turner comes up in the biggest of spots. And I know it didn't go according to plan. We had some bullpen issues and we couldn't get out there quick enough. But we found a way. Pete Alonso pinch hits, gets a knock, and we load the bases here. And Luis Arise had already hit in two home, uh, hit two homers for them, and was giving us the. Look at real Those up. pitches are short. Yeah, you think these guys ain't in? Yeah. He was waiting for something to be said, and an 0-2 change. Oh, oh, we blacked out. And I'm just gonna show you the dugout because it was one of the greatest, like, professional moments of my life when he turned to this dugout. <laughs> Everybody's out. Coaches are jumping over the fence. Jerry Manuel went out, my bench coach, to let the Venezuela team know. Aaron Nato looked like a silverback gorilla. Look at, look at <laughs> Lance, Lance. Ray. <laughs> Boom, yeah. everybody. Zero. Uh, oh, I like that. There, there, was a, there was a moment that. <laughs> After one of his homers where you turn to someone and go, this bleeping guy. I mean, did he, you knew he was a great player coming in, but did you, were you surprised by how good he was? If that I, makes I, sense. I was surprised by kind of just watching all of them. There's a reason they're superstars, the way they go about their craft. They are relentless in their pursuit of being great. Nothing is done to go through the motions. You know, I mean, we've been sitting on this couch together for a long time. I feel like I know you, but there were moments the camera would pan to you, you're down by two, and you are poker face. I'm that's like, way to do is it. he that calm? That's no, way to do no, it. I wasn't that calm. But I, I could tell on everyone else's face, like Andy Pettit felt like he was pitching. <laughs> Brian McCann felt like he was calling the game with the catchers. Mikey Young was thinking about lineup construction. Jerry Manuel, they were, and I just felt like, my job was to make sure the overall well-being of that dugout never wavered. Let me but ask inside, you, you were just. I'm sure you, ah! <laughs> you got you got this question a lot. So did I. Could you envision doing this full time? Yeah, yeah, I could. I could. To be back in the fight with those guys and in the dugout with them, you forget. I mean, what they go through on a daily basis, how hard it is to put themselves out there. So. Yeah, I could. And I'd like to do it without the constraints yeah. that some of these teams had on us because it was tough. It was tough, but we had guys bail us out. It was an awesome, awesome experience. And now let's get on with the regular okay. season. Wait, who surprised you most before we get on? Well, I think my, my time with Tim Anderson with the whole bat flip thing was chronicled and then end up being around him on a daily basis. I felt like he was one of our early igniters. I ended up moving him to second. JT Real Muto is a dude. There's a lot of them. 
There's a lot of them. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. We were all we're all proud of you. People we're all proud see of you, you as carefree and fun on television, but we know the preparation that you do for this show and for that. I mean, yeah. it was a complete labor of love. So three years from now, let's do it again. Run it back. So, let's run it back.